Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, today is a very exciting day. It is the start of canning season for the 2020 gardening year. I'm so happy to get started again and to start filling our pantry. Over the winter and early this spring, we had a few things planted in our greenhouse, some cauliflower, and today I harvested really what is the last of the cauliflower we have out growing out there. We didn't grow enough cauliflower, so we decided to buy locally this year. We bought quite a few heads from the local Amish community. They have produce auctions at a couple different places, and so I actually had a friend grab a bunch of cauliflower for me and for the family so that I can do several different things with it. One of our favorite ways to eat cauliflower here on the homestead is to pickle it and to actually make it spicy. So today I'm gonna to be making spicy pickled cauliflower. I thought I would bring you guys along and share a recipe that we love so much. Over a year ago already, I shared my recipe for spicy pickled eggs. And in that video, I told you all that it was actually very similar to our recipe for spicy pickled cauliflower. Lots of you said, please do a video on spicy pickled cauliflower. So you're in luck, here it is today. There's one trick that I want to share with you about using homegrown cauliflower and broccoli and some other kind of tricky garden vegetables to wash. Cauliflower can easily have little bugs hiding in its nooks and crannies, some little worms and bug eggs. An easy way to get all of that yucky stuff out of there before you start working with it is to soak it in salt water. Basically, I just fill up my kitchen sink with cold water and I dissolve about a half a cup of salt in there. You just lay your cauliflower in there, turn it around a bunch of times to make sure that the water gets down in all the nooks and crannies. Leave it there for about 30 minutes and rinse it out. All of those bugs and cabbage worms and any other kind of creepy crawlies will die in the salt water and either float to the top or sink to the bottom and then you don't have to worry about them being in your spicy pickled cauliflower on the pantry shelf. Although I don't think pickled worms would be the worst thing in the world. I have already taken care of all of that. All the bugs and worms are gone. So now I get to start making the spicy pickled cauliflower. This is a very easy recipe. I do a ton of canning and I have a lot of canning videos, so make sure you check out the canning playlist, especially if you're new at this. I want to encourage you to try out water bath canning and as you get more confident, pressure canning, which we won't be using today. But make sure you look through some of those videos that we have in our playlist because they're very helpful. Lots of people have been afraid to can, then they've watched some of our videos and have had the courage to do it and now are much more comfortable. So check them out. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start chopping up this cauliflower. I'm gonna be doing one water bath canner full of jars. That's for me, that is seven quart jars. So I'm gonna get my jars out, my cutting board and start chopping. Now that my jars are about half filled with cauliflower, there are a couple other things that we need to add before we top it with more cauliflower. I'm gonna start off with what is gonna make these spicy, and that is jalapenos. I'm gonna slice these really thin with a mandolin and put one jalapeno pepper per jar. If you like it spicier, you could put in another one. If you don't like it so spicy, you could only put half a one, but we're gonna do one jalapeno per jar. I'm gonna be using a mandolin to slice these up. It makes it really easy, really quick. Um, actually, one of our fantastic subscribers sent us this to give it a try and we absolutely love it. It comes with all different types of blades. 
If you're interested in learning about this, after you see me using it, you can check it out in our Amazon shop. I'm gonna put gloves on while I'm handling the jalapeno peppers just to make sure that I don't get that jalapeno juice on my face or accidentally on my lips and my eyes. So this mandolin works easy as pie. Be careful though, you can accidentally slice off part of your finger when you're using one of these. So just be careful. Off comes the lid. And now we can just put these slices in our jar all around there. We'll just do that for every jar. It makes me sad that I wasn't able to use homegrown um, jalapeno peppers in here, but cauliflower and jalapenos, they just don't grow during the same part of the growing season. So I actually had to buy these jalapenos. Not that all the jalapenos are in the jars are gonna move on to garlic. In each jar, we're gonna put at least one clove of garlic. We're gonna peel it and then smash it so that it opens up and all those good flavors will come out into the brine that we're gonna put in there and flavor the cauliflower up nicely. Now, if you like a lot of garlic, you can put two or maybe three cloves. If you don't like much at all, put in one. If you don't like it at all, just leave it out. That'll be fine too. So I'm gonna peel these using one of these like silicone dealies. Uh, someone actually sent us this too off of Amazon. It is fantastic. You just put a clove of garlic inside here and then roll it back and forth on the counter and it grips that paper that surrounds the clove and takes it right off. Just drop it out of there, it's clean. So we're gonna do a bunch of these. I'm gonna smash them with the back of a knife and put them in our jars. While we're adding things to the jars, I'm just gonna go ahead and add the other ingredients that we need. We need to add a half a teaspoon of mustard seed to each jar and a half a teaspoon of black peppercorns. Now on our homestead, we cook almost every meal from scratch. So I buy a lot of things, including spices and seasonings from bulk from a company called Azure Standard. We love that company because not only can you buy in bulk, but a lot of their products are organic and they are affordable. They deliver to most areas once a month. So you order online and pay online and they deliver to an area in your community. Um, and then once a month, you just go pick up the things that you need. Now, if you are interested in learning more about that, we have the web address in our uh, video description listed below. Okay, those are all set. Now back to adding more cauliflower all the way up to the top. We're gonna stop at about an inch to a half inch from the top of the jar. Now as I am filling these up to the top, I'm giving them a little shake so that they can adjust their position in there. And now I'm gonna start really pressing down to make sure I can get as much of that cauliflower as possible in the jar. When these are cooking in the canner, the cauliflower, it'll soften up a little bit. It won't be super crunchy after it's all done, but it won't be super mushy either, like if we were gonna be pressure canning them. Uh, so they'll still have a nice form. But anyway, they get soft, and in the end, when you take them out of the canner, if you haven't really pressed them down, They'll kind of float up to the top of your jar and then you'll be like, man, I wish I would have put more cauliflower in there. Um, and they're so good. You're going to want as much cauliflower stuffed in these jars as you possibly can get. Now that all seven jars are completely filled up, we're going to clean this all up and get ready to make the brine.
Now a basic pickling brine is 50% vinegar, 50% water. Uh, sometimes you'll see more vinegar, but you'll never see less, or you shouldn't ever see less than 50% vinegar to water solution when pickling. This recipe we have tried with 100% white vinegar, um, also 100% apple cider vinegar, but today we're gonna try half white vinegar, half apple cider vinegar. We actually thought that 100% of the apple cider vinegar was just kind of too rich and the flavor was too overpowering on the cauliflower, which is why we're gonna do half and half. But you could do any of it. You could do 100% either one, half and half, mix it up. But in the end, it must be at least 50% vinegar along with the 50% water. So we're gonna start off with four cups of white vinegar. And we're gonna put this in a pot, like a stock pot or you know whatever pot you have that is big enough to hold this volume of liquid. We are gonna heat this up in the end on the um, stove and we're gonna bring it to a boil. So that's why it needs to be in one of these pots. Okay, so that was four cups of white vinegar. Now we're gonna do four cups of apple cider vinegar. And then after this, we're gonna add eight cups of water. Also to this brine uh, mixture, I'm going to add a half a cup of salt. Now the original recipe that I used to follow for this uh, said to use a full cup of salt, but that ended up being way too salty for us. So I'm cutting it down to a half of a cup, but please know that if you want it to be super salty or if you don't think that half a cup will be salty enough for you, go ahead and you can increase it up to one cup of salt. On our homestead, we use pink Himalayan salts, which is what I'm using today. This is a quarter cup, so we'll use two. And I also order this in bulk from Azure Standard. Now we're gonna mix this up and then transfer this onto the stove top. In the meantime, while this is coming up to a boil, we want to make sure that our canning pot, which I already have on the stove, turn that heat on and start heating it up. Uh, that way you're not fumbling around when you're filling jars and everything. Also in the meantime, get everything that you need for canning, get it ready and out on the counter because as soon as this starts to boil, we can uh, start pouring them into the jars. Now I want to add a couple things. I just wanna say a couple things. All of these jars are already clean and sterile. Most of the time you'll see um, instructions that say add hot liquid to hot jars. Well, these have been, uh, these are at room temperature. It doesn't really make sense to me to spend, you know, 30 or 40 minutes packing these with raw vegetables into hot jars when in that time they're just going to cool down anyway. So really, as long as it's not super cold in your house and you're putting hot boiling water into your jars, you shouldn't have to worry about the jars bursting. That's really the reason why you'd put hot liquid into hot jars is so that the temperature difference isn't too much for the glass jars. So I just wanted to add that. Okay, so stir, stove, turn on your heat and get things ready to can. Okay guys, here we go. Let's get canning. Remember, if you're new to canning, uh, check out some of my earlier videos that teaches you all of these steps in detail so that you don't miss anything. So we're just gonna start by ladling in some of this brine. Give it a stir, another stir. We're gonna ladle it in until it's just about a half inch from the top, but then we're gonna get the bubbles out. If you're confident just pouring right from here into the jar, go ahead and do that too. It saves a ton of time. So that's almost right. So I'm just gonna stick a utensil down in there and move those veggies around a little bit, and that is breaking up any air bubbles 
that are down inside of there. You don't want that. You want the air bubbles out. Okay, let's take a measurement and see how much liquid we have in there. It's not enough. We need it a half an inch from the top of the jar. Check that again. There, that is perfect. Now we're gonna take this over here and wipe off the rim of the jar. We're gonna put a lid on there. Now you guys, there have been some changes in the canning rules and you can find what to do with these tops on the back of the ball uh, lid box. It says to wash the lids in hot soapy water, rinse well, set aside until ready to use. Then you fill your jar, wipe the food from the top and put the lid right on and then put your ring on. So you no longer have to sterilize them. You don't have to use the magnetic thing to put them from the hot water onto your jar. It's a lot faster and easier this way. Just make sure your hands are clean and that you have washed the lids and dried them and that they're clean. All right, so now we're gonna put this in our canner. And we're gonna keep filling and putting them in the canner until there's no more room. This time, I'm gonna speed it up. If you're feeling a little bit more confident about canning and filling the jars, go ahead and give that a try. Needs a little more. Perfect. Okay, the last one is going in. We're making sure that there's at least one inch of water above the tops of the jars. Keep that lid on. We're gonna turn the heat on to high. We're waiting for it to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we will set our time. Now these need to boil and process for 10 minutes, but we actually process ours for 15 minutes because of our elevation. We are over 1,000 feet above sea level, so we need to increase our processing time by five minutes. Our time is up. So we're gonna turn off the timer and we're gonna turn off the heat. But before we take the jars out of the pot, we are going to remove the lid and just let them sit in the water for five minutes. Well, we're all set. They can come out of the canner. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me today as I canned the very first produce for us for this season. If you know somebody who would enjoy this recipe, enjoy learning how to can, please share this on all your social media. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.